Hi, my name is B, and welcome to my channel, Mama Needs to Read Romance. I am so excited about doing another Christmas vlog today. Right now, I am sitting in front of my books. These are all of my books about, there's like a little over 200, I believe. And this is my birthday month. I've been told that I might get bookshelves, actual bookshelves. So I'm really excited. So I will let you know later this month if there's a place for these. <laughs> It'd be nice. It would be nice. But today we're going to talk about something that knocked my socks off. It blew me away. It was Mary Jo Putney's story in The Last Chance Christmas Ball. The story was called In the Bleak Midwinter. And I chose this in part because I've really wanted to read Mary Jo Putney. I've never done it before. I am completely in love with all of her step backs. The title In the Bleak Midwinter, there's a song and I adore it. It's one of my favorite relaxing Christmas songs. So when I saw that this was a title of a story, I thought, oh my gosh, how perfect. I definitely want to give this a whirl. I am going to be linking the song below, by the way, along with of course this book. So let's talk about this story. I can't get over this. Mary Jo Putney, obviously she's a legend for a reason. She's amazing. I loved her beautiful, beautiful writing. She says so much with so few words. She is definitely one who alludes to love scenes more so than what I'm used to. I've, I guess I've just been mostly reading things that are more like, hey, open door, we're gonna tell you all about it. But it was a nice change of pace. She leaves a lot to the imagination. I had trouble reading the last few pages of this book because my eyes kept welling up with tears and I couldn't see the words. <laughs> That's how good this was, how much it emotionally touched me. In fact, I started the story and then a couple things happened for a few days and I couldn't finish the story. Like I really wanted to get to it and I kept looking at the book longingly like, there it is, I wanna read more and I, there's just too much to do right now. Even though I only had read a few pages, it had gripped me and I couldn't wait to see what was going to happen. I'm so sorry that I'm going on and on, but it is a vlog, right? So I'm supposed to do that a little bit. Here's the story, 1800s, English countryside. We have two brothers, Edward and Kimball. Kim, he goes by. One day they encounter their new next door neighbor, Roxanne. She goes by Roxy. She's a fiery redheaded little girl. And she walks up to them one day and says, can I ride horses with you? And Edward's like, no, you're too little. And we don't know if it's okay with your parents. Her parents who had been killed, she's living with her grandparents now and is looking for love and a family and affection and attention. Anyway, Kim says, well, she can ride with me. And he takes her and he puts her in front of him on his horse and she falls in love right there. And I did too. Kim is an honorable man. In fact, when he gets the opportunity, he goes and fights Napoleon Bonaparte in Waterloo. Unfortunately, he is ravaged in the war. He's got some pretty serious injuries. So when he comes back, he locks himself literally in a tower and refuses to let anyone but his footman, his name is Wells. He will only allow Wells to see him. That's the only person, not his parents, not his brother, not Roxy. They pledge their undying love to one another before he left. And there were some beautiful love scenes alluded to beside a river. It was lovely. They are waiting and waiting for Kim to come around and allow people to see him. And he isn't willing to do that. In fact, he has said that he wants Roxy to forget him and marry Edward. This story is filled with gentlemen and ladies, just people behaving beautifully and just kind, <laughs> which I haven't encountered enough in books recently, I don't think. And I really enjoyed that about this story. Edward says, you know, Roxy, I've always loved you too. And I would love to marry you. And Roxy says, but what if I can convince Kim to have me after all? And he says, well, then I'll be happy too. I'll just be the happiest man, no matter what. Either you get to be with Kim and Kim will be happy and so will you, or I'll get to marry you and I'll love that too. And I'm like, I never ever hear a man talk like that. So this was surprisingly refreshing and also probably extremely fictional. <laughs> they find out though that Kim has decided he's going to move away. He can't stand to be in their childhood estate anymore. He's just going to go off and be a hermit. And so the Christmas ball is Roxy's last chance to try to tear down his walls and show him how much she loves him and how little she cares about whatever damage has been done to him. She talks to Wells and says, can you just try to leave the door on? 
unlocked for a little bit. And so he, he does. After this big dinner, she goes up to this tower and Kim is shocked to find her. She's got a dress. It's like a trick dress. Maybe it's this dress because apparently she just pulls on some ribbons and everything just falls right off. So she has Kim's attention, I'll say. And they have a lovely discussion probably before the dress fell off, I'm assuming. But she just lets it be known that he needs to let her in. He needs to move on with life. And I felt a little badly because she basically called him a coward for not letting his family and friends see him. But I thought, gosh, I mean, he was just, he had been back for six months. He's still recovering. I can't imagine the emotional and physical damage that has been done. And she's calling him a coward. I think he's probably pretty brave. <laughs> I just felt badly. She convinces him that she loves him and she doesn't care. And like she kisses his scars and it's so beautiful. And they finally realize the full passion for one another. If you get what I'm saying, Mary Jo Putney puts it even better. And in the way she alludes to things again. I'm gonna read you a little excerpt too that I just thought was so powerful. She kissed his scars tenderly and by that simple act made them mundane, merely part of who he was rather than a reminder of unspeakable despair. And as she accepted him, he accepted himself and started to become the man he wanted to be for her. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So, so good. Oh, anyway, so, she helps him put on his uniform. He helps her get back into that trick dress <laughs> and they go down to the ball. He was gonna sort of hide until she had a chance to tell Edward, hey, guess what? Kim and I are back together. You and I are gonna get married, but he's gonna come out here. We're going to announce that he's home and that we're going to get married. It, Cause she wanted to be respectful of Edward and tell him, well, Edward's already fallen in love with somebody else in the ballroom. They come to the ballroom and they didn't expect all the doors to be open. So as they were rounding the bend, everybody saw Kim and Roxy at the same time and Kim was worried about how he would be received based on his appearance or the fact that he's been hiding for the past six months and everyone welcomed him with open arms and Edward was looking to see if he recognized his brother. He hadn't seen him since before the war and they see one another across the ballroom and Kim gives him a big thumbs up, which is what they did as children to show one another that they were okay. <laughs> it's just, oh my gosh, so good. But the best is at the very end. And I, and I love how Mary Jo Putney managed to tie it into Christmas. She said, as Kim took a firmer grip on his beloved, the old chaplain who lived at Hallborn, which is where they were, for many years said in a hushed reverent voice, unto us a son is given. Because Kim came back. <laughs> Just, oh, it was so good. It was so good. I loved how Kim was reborn based on Roxy's love for him. I love how he's just going to be able to live his full life. Edward's gonna have a happy ending with whoever it was he was dancing with and Roxy is getting her man. It's just, it was so beautiful and deep and I am a Mary Jo Putney fan, let me tell you. This was so much fun and I can't wait for my next vlog. If you've missed any of the vlogs, I've got them right here. Also, you could feel free to subscribe, no pressure. I hope you're enjoying whatever it is that you're reading, whether it's a Christmas novella or not. Until next time, thanks so much, take care, bye.